welcome everyone today uh, to another ACDI national webinar. We're here to talk about our, our a new exciting product that was released, um, you know, a soft launch, if you will, over the last few months. We're really getting into the groove with this product. It's a uh, the first um, cloud-enabled product for paper cut, well, excuse me, cloud-developed, right? And uh, really excited to have Rich O'Boyle and Ryan Husinga here to uh, kick off this webinar with us. Guys, you want to introduce yourselves real quick? Yep, I'm uh, Rich O'Boyle, Regional Solutions Director for ACDI in the center part of the country, and a number of the people I see out there I work with every day in my accounts, and then I see some of my team out there too. So excited to walk everybody through what we're seeing and hearing around the new Hive product. Cool. And I'm not Rich O'Boyle. My name is Ryan Huizinga, and I'm a solutions architect here at ACDI, and I support Rich, the central region, and write those awesome emails when you ask those difficult questions. Glad to be aboard. Awesome. Thank you, guys. And as always, if you have questions throughout the presentation, please use the chat window. Um, feel free to send them to all the panelists, uh, Ryan and I and Rich. We will tackle those questions for you as they come in. And with that, we'll turn it over to Rich. Let him get us started. Thanks, Mark. So happy Thursday, everyone, and I appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. I know it's um, tough to get the calendars peeled apart to do something like this, but hopefully what we're going to talk through is helping uh, you and your discussions, uh, maybe answer any questions you might have had from other presentations, um, or maybe you just want to hang out and spend some time with Mark and Ryan and I on a Thursday, and I think that's super cool. So um, what we've got for you today, if you can see my screen, hopefully, um, is Papercut Hive. And Papercut Hive is Papercut's cloud native public cloud offering um, for our resellers and, and end users um, to get that full cloud experience. And we've already said today that um, no more puns around Hive. So what the buzz doesn't uh, really resonate as much anymore, I guess we beat that one up. So. What we're going to attempt to do just to kind of get you guys comfortable with an agenda. I think that um, my goal today was to keep it uh, really simple, straightforward um, and open. So to Mark's point, um, I'd like to be able to have some chat questions coming in. And um, the question on the table already is who does my hair? And I tell everybody, if you've been in your basement for about a year and a half, this is something you too can achieve. So, um, but to be serious with everybody, our, our agenda today is light. It's uh, an overview. So we're gonna kind of talk about what I hear uh, and what I see in the market in my region uh, with this product uh, and with customer feedback and with reseller conversations. Uh, Ryan is gonna take us through a wonderful demonstration. Soup to nuts, I guess is what they say. No buzz in that and uh, definitely answer some questions and hopefully highlight some things you guys may or may not have been aware of yet. Then my goal uh, is to help you understand where it fits um, and give you some ideas on where to be putting this in your conversations. Number four, uh, success, what does it look like? So I've pulled apart a couple um, sales uh, wins from us in here so we can kind of look at those and talk through how that worked. Uh, and then some sales highlights. Uh, so some things you just need to know off the top of your head or your customers may want to know when you're talking to them. Uh, and then of course, how we can help resources, um, people and content, of course, that we can deliver to make this easier for you. So without further ado, I'm going to hop right in. Um, and Ryan and Mark, if you can grab the chat, if you see something up there that was worth pausing for, I'll definitely feel that at any point, that'd be cool. All right, so without further ado, my marketing department, did not create this. So I will put that up there at first uh, glance to everybody. Uh, my team is far more advanced than this. This is actually um, what I call a scratch pad, but I like to use this with my uh, resellers and customers to kind of talk about Hive, because um, I think it's it can't get any simpler than this when you think about what we're trying to accomplish with this product. So if you look at the center of what we've got on the screen, of course, that's MF, that's our flagship. If you weren't familiar with that, uh, it's been around since mid-90s. 
Uh, it's developed into an amazing platform, small, medium, large customers all over the place, a lot of capabilities, um, a household name in some industries, if you might think that. Um, and then if you look on the periphery, uh, out beyond that, we're looking at hives. So if you look at the way that's laid out, we are talking about trying to expand your market. And I don't want to overcomplicate this, um, but really, if you think about even a couple of years back, and obviously we've seen a lot of things change industry and technology really quickly in the past year. But if you even think a couple of years back, a lot of conversations I was having and you were having were about customers who didn't have an IT team, uh, didn't have an infrastructure to support print management. So um, Hive opens up that door um, and there's even opportunity to have a hybrid. So I have some discussions now with customers who have MF and their remote offices, they may wanna implement a Hive. Um, so it doesn't have to be one or the other, it can be both or it can be just Hive or MF, but it definitely hopefully today will show you how it's much easier to adopt um, in your conversations for your teams and for your, your customers. Um, and hopefully this will this will enlighten you into some new talk tracks and, and conversations. So as we move through here, um, this will probably be the heaviest slide I have for you today. Um, I don't want it to be heavy, so I'm gonna try and walk you through a little bit of it. But when you think about what we're doing with Hive, it really is um, leading edge technology with the fact that a lot of the, the components to this are things you find in networks today, conversations you're having with your IT customers, um, they may or may not be mentioning this, um, but we'll, we'll kind of go around the circle and help you understand a little better. So if you think about one of the biggest complaints or challenges um, that people have had with print management or printing in general is availability um, and the ability to make it um, kind of resilient to uh, failures, updates, and so on. So we've created this edge mesh uh, technology inside Hive, but really that technology has been out with your biggest manufacturers like Microsoft and Cisco and other people for years, but really helps us keep the product alive with multiple points uh, of failure uh, that, that are preserved through these nodes. And Ryan will talk a little bit about that when we do our, um, do our discussion through the demo site and see how this gets planted onto your system. But to keep it even simpler, it also helps with the jobs, the print jobs, the traffic. Um, it helps keep it local and it helps um, move it through the cloud if we decided to do that. So both are options through Hive. If you think about continuous deployment, you know, not to over milk that term, but uh, really offering features quickly, getting them to your customers, turn them on if they want, maybe never use them at all. But um, the access with this being a cloud system means it's not only highly available, but also very quick to turn features and changes um, down to a massive customer set. Uh, shift left security, uh, every conversation you're in now, I would say 90% of them in technology are related to security. Um, so why not build a product where we thought about security first instead of last? And that's all shift left security is for everybody. Uh, zero trust, um, we don't trust anybody. Uh, in the network, constantly authenticating tokens um, to match those users, and then job encryption, falling into that security conversation, but keeping that data very secure um, for your customers um, and the IT teams that support those customers. So um, that technology web that we've created around Hive really helps keep this product very bleeding edge. Uh, and the conversations I've had to date with IT teams uh, and your end customers have gone very well because of some of the steps that PaperCut's taken to make this product very accessible, easy, um, and technically relevant right now. So we move forward a little bit. High brings you know new opportunities, and I mentioned uh, that discussion we had years ago with no IT, no infrastructure, and um, really the product allows us to have a low, no barrier entry point. Um, those objections we used to deal with, with I don't have an IT team, I don't have a server, um, I don't know how I'm gonna manage these print uh, drivers and so on. All of that really goes away with Hive for the most part. There really isn't that 
long drawn out um, piece of discussion around where does it live? How's it going to work? Who's going to watch it? Um, certainly you can offer services around it, um, but it's really meant to be easy to administer, deliver, printing, scanning, support, copying, uh, authentication, security. If you think about number two, um, the cloud really has done a lot for us. And one of those things that's happened uh, kind of in an accelerated fashion over the last year is this thought of a, a borderless or boundless network. Um, a lot of your customers are talking about trying to support home users, um, trying to support users in the field. Uh, maybe their offices have shrunk, but they still need people out there doing um, their jobs and printing is a big part of that. So with Hive, there really isn't the traditional walls or firewalls of a network um, with the way this technology works with the edge mesh. Uh, and it makes us get into conversations that are extremely different, unique, um, and very forward thinking with a lot of customers. And we'll share some of those later. Security first, uh, I said it earlier, I'll say it again, every conversation you're in that involves data, whether it's paper-based especially, or just network data, security is very important. Uh, and device and user management, uh, this platform isn't just about users now. Uh, you'll see a lot of elements in this platform that drive uh, consumable uh, technology to do forecasting, uh, maybe some alerts and some, some early phase uh, error mapping and, and control. Uh, so you'll see more out of this than you've seen in MF traditionally um, through this cloud portal. And of course, highly available. So this should reduce not only the amount of IT calls um, and support calls, but the user experience should go up. Uh, it should significantly go up. And if it doesn't, then we've done something wrong. But uh, in all the feedback we've had with the customers that are using it so far, um, highly available uh, is really a term that they like because everybody's happy. It's always there, no problems. Um, and there's very little IT resource involved with that. So. Um, those would be what I, yes. Yeah, if I may, you know, one of the things that we've learned um, over the last six, eight months in rolling this out is, you know, a lot of people are getting hung up on print management and what this means. We know that this product is not as feature rich as MF is today. Uh, it, there's, there's a roadmap, it's coming, right? Um, but, but, it, it, but we know it's not there. So one of the terms we're kind of coined for this is it's, it is truly print enablement. You know, what Rich was talking about earlier of enabling uh, people to print easily, you know, from any kind of network, right, with security in mind, top of mind, that's really where Hive is, is coming in strong, is enabling those customers to um, have some simple print management at the beginning, right, secure print crew, print queues and things, but it is true print enablement. And that's what we're all hoping to do with this product is enable users that want to print to be able to print easier and have those pages coming out at your devices. So just think about that when you're uh, pitching Hive today or when you're thinking about it, that you know in the, in the full sense of terms as far as print management and what we're traditionally used to in our industry and what MF has led uh, for many years, um, you know, Hive's not there yet, but it's on its way. Thanks, Mark. That's a good way um, to think about it. But expanding the way you think about it is also part of this as well. So I, I don't want to be limited in our approach, neither is Mark or the team, but um, just keeping it a, a different perspective on what we traditionally thought. You know, I think the last year has taught us um, that you've got to be ready for change and things are happening. Um, so I like to share with a lot of the teams that I support that you know, um, listening is really the key here uh, to your customers. They're going to lead you to the right answer. Um, we have an agenda and they have an objective that they want or a goal they want to achieve. And we'll meet in the middle uh, with some type of technology to make that better for them. Uh, I truly believe that. So um, yeah, it's a good point, Mark. I appreciate that. So moving a little bit forward here um, in the in the simplicity world of how do our users access this? Um, and Ryan will talk a little bit more about this in a second, but um, we not only have the apps on the mobile devices um, that can be your, your control panel um, for print release and interacting with the devices with error notifications and, and other pieces of information. We also support NFC technology through this, um, which uh, allows us to even program the tags uh, if we want to through Hive. 
uh, QR code technology, which we've had for a long time, um, a little bit more seamless in Hive now too. But then our traditional username, password, ID, uh, card usage um, can all come into play on the higher end of the product, uh, depending on where you're trying to, to access it with. So we're really flexible um, to allow that touch and touchless uh, environment. So simple, interactive, um, what you're used to from paper cut in products for sure. So I have Ryan on the phone and he is much more a sage, a wise man to the technology behind this than even myself is. Um, and he does this quite a bit and um, is very well versed on these conversations about how does it work? Where does it live? How do I support it? So who better to talk about it than the one, the only Ryan Husinga, uh, magic man behind the ACDI curtain. So what I'm going to do now is uh, move um, Ryan over to a control seat here. So I'll make him a uh, presenter. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate You're that. Welcome. And thanks for the introduction. It, it made it sound like uh, I'm a doer, so I do things, right? So that's what I think that's what Rich was saying. And yes, uh, that's what I, I guess you can hear my voice. You can see my face. Okay, yeah, that is what you're saying. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, I'm involved with a lot of the attendees. I see a lot of familiar names up there. I've done paper cut hive, NFR trials with you, installs, customer conversations. So um, yeah, we've been kind of busy here. I'm gonna go ahead and just stop my uh, video there, just so uh, I don't uh, lock up because sometimes this locks up when I screen share. Okay, great. Well, you're seeing the screen. It just says ACDI. Uh, confirm you can still hear my voice. Internet's popping in and out. We're good? All That's right. good. Awesome. Uh, let's bring up Hive. Let's see all these bells and whistles. We're talking about print enablement, print management, cloud native, shift left security. Let's go ahead and bring up Paper, Paper Cut Hive. I'm turning some knobs. I'm pushing buttons. No, it's, I'm just kidding. It's not that hard. Uh, Paper Cut Hive, since it's hosted in the cloud, it's web-based management, right? That means you can go ahead and manage it from anywhere in the globe, right? As long as you have internet connectivity and a device that has a browser. And this is the Papercut Hive admin console, the dashboard here. Let me hide some of that. There's a lot going on on here. You're like, well, this looks familiar. This looks just like the Papercut MS dashboard. It does a little bit, but there's a lot more to it. Um, so what's going on here is, yes, we have um, nice graphs and everything. We're going to see usage, not just print usage, copy, scan, fax usage. It's going to be available from those devices that support the full embed of Papercut Hive. Also, what we got going on is gamification. Right, big bold icons that lets an admin know what's going on in the environment. What do I need to pay attention to? I don't have time to read error logs, run reports, ask a hundred questions. I just want to know what's going on so I can get in and get out. Right, so less time for IT. Well, right away I can see how many errors are going on in my environment. That could be devices dropping offline, and by device I mean a printer, a multifunction device, a physical device we're talking to, or maybe we've got warnings going on. Those are warnings that are being captured via SNMP low paper, out of paper, low toner, out of toner, paper jam, right? So now we can get notifications on those. Also jobs that are actually being held within the system. So yes, Paper Cut Hive is a secure print only workflow. When a user prints a job, jobs will be held securely within the edge mesh, waiting for them to release. And now an admin can see how many jobs are actually being utilized in the system at the moment. Now this up here, this is the heart of Paper Cut Hive. This is the edge mesh. And it is self-healing, so right now I got a green indicator, fantastic. But if edge nodes, and we'll talk about that in a moment, drop off, the edge mesh um, is able to go ahead and self-heal, identify when Rich or when Mark leave the office and they're no longer contributing to the edge mesh. Let's go ahead and fill in that gap so we're not depending on them for job replication or job encryption. Now this little beacon up here, that's letting the admin know, okay, Papercut Hive, my edge mesh is successfully talking to my Papercut cloud services. All right, so that's where all of this data is being uh, stored and graphically uh, displayed back to the admin is in Papercut Cloud Services. Uh, thank you so much being cloud native. They gave us some really neat features in here. Let's take a look at what else is going on here. We've got a live feed. So now we can see as admins log into the system, and that's right, you can have multiple admins inside the console. As users are authenticating, submitting jobs, printing jobs successfully as jobs are failing, an admin can quickly see what's going on in my environment. Beyond that, yep, I can see who are my top users, my top printers, and I can click on those and go ahead and interrogate logs. What are they printing? What are they uh, trying to release? What large jobs, what color jobs, what black and white jobs are coming through the system? Now, something new to Papercut Hive's dashboard, um, new to Papercut that I've seen, is the forecasting, which is pretty neat. 
So paper cut is tracking that print, that copy usage, right? And we know that makes paper. Well, now we can go ahead and provide that admin with some intelligence uh, based on their current paper usage. We can predict how much paper they would need in the next 60, 90, uh, on 120 days, which is good. We're not encouraging them to say, I need to purchase more paper. That might be, or they might see, hey, we're actually using more paper than we should. Uh, I should probably implement some rules like two-sided printing to use that second side of paper to kind of slow down the amount of paper usage. But beyond that, also we can look at other consumables such as toner usage across those devices. That's right. So Paper Cut Hive is listening to the toner usage on those black and white and those multifunction color devices. And we can provide that admin some intelligence, how much toner they'll need to have in the next 60, 90, maybe 30 days, 120 days, maybe a year. But we're not encouraging the customer to go ahead and build a, a closet full of toner, have a toner empire there. What this is mainly used for is like, wow, we are using a lot of toner. Let's go ahead and implement some more rules to kind of curtail our color usage or maybe prohibit color usage to some users that are, have been heavily printing color that's not necessary. So you get that type right. of intelligence within PaperCut. Absolutely. What's up, Rich? I was going to say, the thing I like most about at least the, the toner one and, and obviously the forecasting for paper too, but toner especially is it's not just a, hey, go out and buy a full set, right? We're actually mm -hmm. interrogating which components of toner you're consuming the most. So if it's more cyan because you're doing business blue, you're going to see more need for that than you would maybe the yellow or the magenta. So it, it is really interrogating what the device is telling it and how often it's consuming those particular pieces of consumable. So I think that's pretty awesome. Correct. And Paper Cut Hive also offers in a feature set in their notifications for low toner warnings. And you get to set the threshold within Paper Cut Hive, not just depending on the threshold of the device. You can set a global threshold, and now you can get notifications when, hey, toner's low. I need some proactive help. Along with the lines of gamification here, uh, we're all going to let the admin know, okay, how uh, jobs being secured in the environment? Um, are they being secured at least? What's our increase on that? Uh, as our unreleased timeout being triggered, right? There is a retention value in PaperCut Hive, just like we have in PaperCut MF, that is configurable. And of course, watermarking. Is watermarking being applied to our job? So PaperCut believes that print management is actually security of the job before it's printed, when it's being printed, and after it's printed. All right, so you're gonna see a lot of those mechanisms and uh, theology inside the PaperCut Hive platform. Yes, we're gonna definitely show you savings. You know, are uh, sheets not being collected? Are we converting jobs to two-sided? Are we converting jobs to black and white? We're going to get some tickers on that, and I'll show you what those rules look like. And also print convenience. Uh, like Mark and Rich mentioned earlier, print enablement, it's kind of the buzzword. IT want to be able to put a solution in that's turnkey to make sure users can print from any device to any device. But this will allow them to get some intelligence. What are users actually printing from? Are they printing more from their mobile phones versus their workstations or vice versa? And our pickup reminders uh, being sent out. So yes, PaperCut Hive will notify the users when a job has been submitted to the system and is about to reach that retention time, about to be deleted from the system. PaperCut Hive is going to reach out to Rich, reach out to Mark and say, hey, you have so-and-so job waiting to be released. Um, better uh, get on it if you actually need this. If not, you can go ahead and let it delete. So we will notify the user when the job is pending deletion and after it's been deleted to go ahead and make sure we're not creating other support tickets saying the user said, I printed a job and now it's not here, your thing's broken. Actually, you got a few emails from Paper Cut Hive and it was deleted because of retention times. Uh, thank you, try again. All right, so that is the dashboard right there. Uh, Chris, so, Rich, is there any questions so, in the chat before I move yeah, on? Yeah, I, I was gonna say um, one of the things that, you know, just to highlight another piece that you, you were uh, kept referring to was the notifications. And I think one of the things that I've heard for a very long time from paper cut uh, users and resellers is they wish there was more interactivity or, or notifications from paper cut when things would happen. So I think what I've heard a couple things in there, one was alert notifications, supply notifications, user notifications about job expiry. Um, one of the things that I like a lot about this is the ability to communicate out to those mobile devices with the apps um, and keep the user informed of what's going on when they need to know. Like, don't use that device. It may be an error or or other things that have come out of the system. Am I, am I uh, pretty close to what a user would experience, Ryan? Are they gonna have that level of interactivity with these notifications? Correct. Uh, so notifications will be delivered from their mobile phone, right? You mentioned on the mobile app, uh, not via email. We won't tackle them too much via email, but those feature sets are coming soon. So you're correct. We'll notify a user and we can do some uh, some reactive and proactive stuff by preventing a user from either sending a job to a device that's in error or it's in warning or offline, or maybe they don't have permissions to it. So yes, we 
paper cut hive is going to com communicate to those end users on behalf of the IT and in my conversations with those high level IT people, they want something that's turnkey, they feel confident, it's like, okay, paper cut hive is handling that communication clearly and concisely to my users, so I don't have to do a lot of hand holding. And we'll take a look at some of those notifications, okay? We'll take a gander at that. Awesome. Now, um, some of you have already set up Papercut Hive in here. Um, I want to kind of go through this little setup here because when you install Papercut Hive for the first time, whether in your demo room or at a customer site, and here at ACDI, we're definitely promoting trials. AC Hive trials are a benefit add. It's great to get it inside the environment, have them test it out, answers all the questions they didn't know to ask, and then it's turnkey, right? It's already in the system, it's working, the customer understands the expectations, and it's continuous deployment so they know new feature sets are coming through. Uh, so, uh, Belinda, I know you put that question in the chat there. You're absolutely right. We like that feedback, correct? Billback is on the roadmap, so stay tuned. In the next couple of releases, you'll see that feature set coming as it expands. Um, but yes, we definitely like that feedback, and Papercut is listening because Papercut is a global solution with a global community. So they are listening. Um, I'm going to go and go through a quick setup. Just to want to let you know, this is exactly what a Papercut uh, admin is going to see for the first time they set it up, which is great. Papercut was smart about this. They said, hey, we're going to go through a forced uh, setup. I say forced because you're not able to uh, defeat any of these processes, but it's helping to train the admin of what to expect and ensure you have a stable environment. First, we're going to communicate with the user, hey, we're going to do a few things. We're going to install an edge node. We haven't talked about that yet, but we're going to get there. We're going to invite that admin as a user. And we're going to go ahead and do some print testing. And now we have edge nodes that can be supported on Mac, Windows, uh, Linux, coming soon. And as soon as they download that edge node and install it on their workstation, Papercut Hive will wait and listen for that to feedback to the cloud services. Look, it just detected that. And it's going to start doing printer discovery. Okay, so for you techies out there, this is a little bit new. Papercut MF listens to print queues. Papercut Hive listens to devices. So it'll reach out via SNMP and start asking devices, are you there? Who are you? What are you? What can you do for me? And we will also leverage print queues to help find those printers. Um, Papercut has put a lot of intelligence and thought into this process here. So it's found at least 12 printers, and it'll keep looking in the background. And yes, you can augment uh, what subnet it's looking at. If any of you have Papercut Hive now, I encourage you to jump into the Discovery Now feature. They just added a few more Easter eggs the other day. Now I've discovered some printers. Now I need to invite myself as the admin, and I need to make sure this system works both from mobile release and at the device before I start deploying it to my users and uh, maybe creating some potential problems or confusion on what's going on. So I just sent an email, and there it goes. I just onboarded myself, and now, I'm go now Papercut Hive is waiting for me to send my first, um, my first print job and accept my email. All right, so it's quick and easy. Like you said, it's 90% turnkey, a little bit of setup. Um, I'm going to navigate down to the edge mesh real quick, and I will show you what a user experience is in a moment. But the edge mesh is the heart of the matter here. It is what makes Papercut Hive so unique uh, and so awesome. So as users so, get Ryan, invited... Ryan, before yeah, we go ahead. dive in a little bit further, I see a, a question out here from someone. Yeah. I see two good questions actually. So I think you mentioned it briefly in the admin setup, but the initial nodes that manage the system um, are only Windows and Mac based today, or are they on other platforms besides Windows and Mac? So right, correct. Edge nodes today are Windows and Mac. Those contribute to the edge mesh, but you can definitely onboard a Chromebook, iOS, and Android, but those don't have edge node services that need to run. Linux and Raspberry Pi are around the corner. All right. Let me see if they've uh, added it yet. So sometimes they add stuff during national webinars, but sometimes I click around. This happened during the last national webinar too. All right. So yeah, so Windows and Mac today, Linux, Raspberry Pi coming around the corner. All right. And there's nothing for the end users or you folks as our partners to download and install. It's continuous deployment, right? So Papercut turns it on in the back end. They either can deliver it to a certain region or across the globe, and it'll go ahead and automatically update your edge node services and provide some new future sets in your admin console. All right. What was the other question, Rich? Or was that both of them? Uh, the, well, of them? the other one, and, and I, you know, I, I, see, I see this question. I like this question. I know it's for another day and another topic because there's a lot to unpack, but Multiverse is a is a product we've been talking quite a bit about um, with its added value around uh, customer support um, and truly being that um, I guess service provider outside the customer network is Hive able to connect to Multiverse yet? Multiverse, Multiverse, never heard of it. I've never heard of it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So 
Correct. So Multiverse was uh, kind of the, the, the footstep, the, the brainchild to kind of understand, okay, we're going to deliver, uh, PaperCut's going to deliver a cloud native solution. How are we going to support that and manage it and give you tools for that since it's not a physical box you can log into? Multiverse will soon support Hive and Pocket. That hasn't been turned on yet. No ETA yet, but if you have Multiverse, you're asking all the right questions, you log in there, go ahead and, go ahead and click Create a Customer, and you'll see if it's turned on or not. But I'm pretty sure as soon as PaperCut is ready to go ahead and enable that, we'll probably be reaching out to you folks directly, ACDI to our partners saying, hey, let's test out this new feature, right? So uh, nothing yet, Rich, unfortunately. And I have heard of Multiverse. I was trying to be funny. Oh, I know. Not good, though. I'm not good at joke. All right, cool. Awesome. No, All right, good. so you see uh, a lot going on on my screen here. Uh, this is the edge mesh. This is a representation of how the edge mesh is operating and functioning in an environment. And an edge mesh is consisted of a few nodes, and there's different types of nodes. We have our super nodes, we have our standard nodes, we have our passive nodes, and we have our cloud nodes, all right? Now, the component that gets installed, whether on a super node, a standard node, or a passive node, is the exact same installer. So there's no different installers, there's no different, uh, a user doesn't have to upgrade or restart to convert themselves from a standard node to a super node. All right, this node's the same uh, solution, but a super node, we're telling PaperCut Hive, that this device, this Windows workstation or server or Mac device or soon to be Linux or Raspberry Pi is highly available. It's always on. Now I do get some pushback when I'm talking to our customers saying, hey, you know, I don't want to support any resources on-prem. I don't want a print server. I don't want any boxes there. I want it to be completely wiped and I want a cloud print solution. Well, we do have a requirement. We do need an edge node there. And it, it does provide a lot of functionality. Once we get into the conversation, they understand, well, it makes it highly available. You add redundancy, encryption, security, and a supported solution. And then they're like, okay, great. Now we just need to figure out where to install it. Do you have an existing print server? Yes, great. We'll install a super node there and we'll leverage that as highly available. Do you have another server that maybe it's not a print server, maybe it's an application server, maybe running a, an email service. Can we install an edge node on that? Okay, yeah, absolutely. Maybe we don't have any servers. Maybe we just have a computer that kind of sits in the corner that it's shared for public users, or maybe it's the front reception desk that has a, a computer that's always on. We can leverage those as super nodes also. But if you're hearing me and I'm hearing, I'm saying that word Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi, as soon as that comes out, that would be another uh, solution that you can deploy and provide to your end customers a headless unit that gets tucked away in a corner that can run a super node service, uh, small platform, lightweight, very minimal cost. All right, so we have some super nodes, all right? Super nodes are highly available. And we have some standard nodes. That's Rich, that's Mark, that's Ryan. These are our, our workstations or our laptops when we're, when we're in the office. And we have some passive nodes. Passive nodes can definitely print and contribute um, jobs into the edge mesh, but they don't help with job encryption or replication across the environment, all right? But they can definitely print, and maybe that's for users um, that are in the office, maybe five or six minutes maybe an hour, we don't want them coming in, contributing to the edge mesh and walking out the door and uh, creating some havoc, all right? So right now, let's go ahead and talk about a print workflow. Uh, as you notice, all these computers are on-prem. The edge mesh is on-prem printing, all right? Yes, it is a cloud service, but PaperCut is so awesome they came up with this. So a user over here, this is Rich. Rich just printed a job. Rich's job is replicated and encrypted on two or more nodes within the same environment. So job, Rich's job is highly available now. So Rich's job could be on his node if he was in the office for a while and the edge mesh decided, hey, yeah, we can depend on Rich, he's gonna be here for a while. Uh, it's definitely replicated on one or two super nodes if those are available and maybe Mark's computer over here. All right, so now Rich is ready to lease his job. He can either do it from his mobile phone, which we'll look at in a moment if we have some time, or he's gonna walk over yonder to that multifunction or single function device, okay? So when Rich is there, He's gonna log into that multifunction device. He's gonna log in with either an access code or a badge swipe, okay? So the PaperCut Hive full embed enables the user to log in with either an access code or a badge swipe. If you decide to go with the light embed, that'll simply just be an access code, quick and easy stuff. But now Rich is here, he just logged in. He sees a laundry list of all the jobs he has pending that are secured and replicated within the edge mesh, okay? Job, Rich went ahead and said, hey, I always wanna print this one job, he'll select that job. Then the edge nodes will say, hey, Rich is ready to print a job. Who has Rich's job? Well, Rich walked away from his computer and he was smart, so he put it to sleep or locked it so nobody else can uh, get into it. So we can't get the print job off of there. The super nodes here, it's like, I have Rich's job and I can get it there. And Mark's computer's over here, so I have Rich's job, but I'm busy right now. Uh, I might not be able to get it there that quick. So the super notes is great. I'm ready, I'm gonna send it your way. Unbeknownst to Rich, unbeknownst to the network and all the other users, that job is sent directly to that printer and it makes paper. Rich walks away happy. 
and the edge mesh knows that job was printed successfully. Let's log that information and paper cut log. Yes, there is reporting. We're definitely going to track that user usage. And it's going to tell all the other edge nodes, delete that job. We no longer need to have that job replicated or encrypted across the edge mesh. Now, we do have white papers on this. Um, this, you know, you get concerned when Rich's print jobs now on multiple computers, you know, is it encrypted? How is, how are you encrypting things? We have full white papers on that. It's a two part key and paper cut with shift left security made sure jobs are encrypted both in transit and at rest. Okay. Now so job Ryan, can, on prem. Yeah, go ahead. Brian, can, can I, uh, I'm, I'm going to try and simplify a little bit of what I heard here. Cause you, there was a lot of great information unpacked there. So number one, first and foremost. Every site has to have a super node on a Mac or a Windows or soon to be Raspberry Pi type uh, device running, correct? You broke up on the first part. Eat, so there, there needs to be a super node on every uh, customer's network, whether it's Mac, Windows, or Linux, correct? Or soon to be Linux. Correct. We highly recommend that. And there's some other reasons for that. Yes, correct. Sure. So that that is the brains. And that's not only to keep the application running in case the hive disconnects or the internet goes down, but to also mm -hmm. help orchestrate these print jobs. Is that is that a pretty good estimation of what we're talking about? Correct. This is it's a dependable node service that can route jobs to any printer that's highly available. Um, if a customer determines not to do an, a super node, I've done a few trials like that. I let them know you're potentially going to have a, a weak edge mesh and user performance and expectations might be a little bit limited because we're depending on their workstation. And we don't need that to be a server. So no one in IT has to right. go spend thousands of dollars on Windows 2016 or 2019 or or even Mac. Correct. Um, okay, good, good. So then the other nodes are also replicating print traffic as well on the network. So it doesn't actually go to the cloud yet. And I'm sure you're going to talk about how we can get it to the cloud, but the jobs stay on premise or on the device, right? Correct. The jobs stay on prem, but since it's a zero trust network that the edge mesh creates, everything is authenticated. Um, so that means users cannot participate in this edge mesh network unless they're invited. When a user, when Rich, when you go to print a job, it's going to communicate with the cloud, say, okay, Rich is ready to print. Is he allowed to print? Edge Mesh will say, yep, Rich is allowed to print. Okay, that job just got replicated. Are we allowed to replicate that job? Yes, we sure are. Rich is at a device. Is he allowed to release that job? Yes, we sure are. So it's zero trust. It's constantly authenticating in the background, but we never burden the user to say, tell me who you are. Tell me who you are. Tell me who you are. Those apps that we're going to show you here in a moment will actually tell PaperCut Hive who Rich, who Rich is and what devices he's able to print from and authenticate on his behalf. So super cool is you also said, if I close my laptop, leave my phone on my desk, shut it off, um, because that replicated, when I walk up to that mm -hmm. MFP, that job is still ready to go because it's on another node, correct? Correct, yep. So high availability and redundancy built in. Yep. Awesome, awesome. And it, the application itself still lives in the cloud, so there's not really a need for a, a server per se on site to run this, but I could still shut down my laptop or phone after I sent that print job, um, and it would still be available to me when I walk up to that MFP. Correct. 100%. Awesome. All right, keep rolling, bud. Okay, cool, nice segue. So let's say uh, Rich is in the environment. He left his laptop in the car, right? He's on his phone. His phone is not connected to the business Wi-Fi, but he still needs a print. He wants to release it out of device, great. That's gonna be a function of this cloud node over here. Off network printing, folks. All right, so the cloud node is not a licensed feature of PaperCut Hive. It is built in, but it is off by default, right? We don't want to just install something and without awareness of the customer saying, hey, yep, you're, you're now opening up the door to off-network printing. We want to make sure they're fully aware and understand the capabilities and controls they have over their own Hive platform. So by simply enabling the cloud node, a little toggle button there, two seconds, a little bit of reading, click enable, and it's done. You would quickly enable off-network printing for all devices, iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, Chrome. All right, so that means Rich can definitely print off network. And in this time, since Rich, his laptop's in the car, his phone's on cellular data, he's not connected to the local edge mesh, but he's still connected to Hive through PaperCut Cloud Services. When he prints that job, that job is not gonna be replicated within the edge mesh, it's gonna be replicated and encrypted and stored inside PaperCut Cloud Services, okay? So this is one of the few conditions where a job will traverse into the cloud waiting to be released and uh, at a single function device within an edge mesh. Now, if you're listening closely, you're hearing some really cool stuff that potentially PaperCut Hive 
with off-network printing or with a customer that has multiple sites across the city, across the nation, that aren't on the same WAN, that have no connectivity, can they leverage the same Hive instance across three different locations in three different states, not connected on the same network, and be able to print in one state and release that another? Yes. Correct. So that functionality will be coming soon through the cloud node. Okay. So that means uh, those customers today, I work with a lot of co-working spaces, real estate agent places that have scenarios like that. They are looking at Hive as their solution to do print enablement, print security, print management without having to invest in a lot of VPN technology across these sites. Um, paper cut and Ryan, is easy. Yes, sir. We do, we do actually have some good data to back that up. You know, our friends at PaperCut went back and analyzed all the uh, installs of Hive today for us. And real estate is the number three vertical that Hive is in. Number one is yeah. education currently. Number two is healthcare. And number three is real estate. So that, that's exactly what you're, uh, you're stating there and the, the data backs it up. Awesome, yes, yeah. I mean, I'm literally doing Hive demos, conversations, email threads six, seven times a day. It is super popular. Uh, they keep us busy, which is great. Thank you for that. Um, so now we just talked about the cloud node, and yes, we do have white papers, so that's another, you know, another obstacle. We do have to get over that IT hurdle. But once, you know, five, ten minutes into the conversation, showing what the platform is and then getting it into their hands and their environment quickly answers or resolves all of those uh, constraints that the customer might have. All right, so we talked about the cloud node, and you see some, some, some information down here. These are all the different edge nodes that are installed within an edge mesh. So, yes, an admin will have the luxury of seeing all the user workstations that got invited and installed at edge node service and how they're communicating with the edge mesh. I have super nodes here. I have some standard nodes. And my level of effort, uh, this is kind of neat. This is a new Easter egg. I have not seen this yet. Um, a admin can quickly come in and say, you know what, that workstation, it's actually a, a static workstation that sits at a desk all day. I'm going to promote that to a super node. As soon as they do that, nothing to install, nothing to reboot, nothing to update, no scripting, no service calls needed. The edge mesh knows, okay, that computer is highly available. It is now a super node. But as you can see here, I can demote, I can download logs, I can force updates, I can force a restart of a node. That's some cool functionality. And this is a cloud service that I'm actually able to, from a distance, now touch uh, physical workstations edge nodes and perform some, uh, some high-level tasks there. That's pretty cool stuff. And as you can see, we have some, um, some teasers in there. Yes, there's Linux and, uh, coming soon, but this is just a demo site, so you'll see those turn on when they get enabled within your environment. Um, any other questions on the edge mesh that I've seen? No? Okay. Um, may we look at what this, what this seems like from the user experience? Uh, I know it's important how it works and everything, but our users are the most important thing, right? Making paper. All right. Cool. So level of effort for inviting a user to uh, PaperCut Hive is going to be the super secret thing that we call email, right? So it's an email invite, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, there are going to be some more advanced features coming soon as the cloud solution matures. Um, but the level of effort today is an admin can quickly come in, type in a single email address, or do an export from their AD and just laundry list, paste a bunch of email addresses and onboard their entire enterprise. We do have some advanced uh, onboarding features that are currently inv available in PaperCut Hive. We can integrate with Azure AD. We can integrate with Google Cloud Directory. And that's some really cool stuff. When Hive first came out, I was talking with some uh, customers, and as soon as I mentioned, oh, yeah, we integrate with Azure AD, they're like, oh, you do? Do you leverage uh, any type of uh, endpoint management solutions? I mean, you mean like Intune? Absolutely. Fantastic. So Intune Azure AD integration is built into PaperCut Hive today, okay, with some other endpoint management solutions coming soon. And we want to hear feedback. We want to hear, the, they have this endpoint management, can you do this? The answer is probably yes, but let's go ahead and document that, get it clarified, and give you instructions. There's a lot of cool stuff going on in the background here. All right, so I invited a user. You're like, great, I just uh, emailed somebody. But what if I don't want to spend time inviting users here? There is an automatic feature inside PaperCut Hive, which is kind of cool. What you can do, and I've had a few of my uh, real estate uh, trials do this. They have a lot of turnover. They have people coming in constantly. Um, they have a QR code that PaperCut Hive generated. They have it stamped on the, on the front door or behind the front door, and they tell the new employee, okay, you want to start printing? Walk over to that QR code, take your mobile phone, and scan that QR code. As soon as they scan that QR code, a browser is going to come, come up, say, hey, it seems like you want to be invited to PaperCut Hive. Click yes, and it'll go ahead and send an invite inside the PaperCut Hive platform. Now here, what we can do as an admin, we can go ahead and say a certain domain or multiple domains. We can auto-approve those users based on their domain or their email address. Or, if not, when that user does do an invite and we're not auto-approving, we want to do a manual improve, a notification will be sent directly to that admin via email, so now they can approve that 
user access from any device as long as they have access to their email. Quick and easy stuff, really good way to onboard people, a lot less touches. And now let's look at what happens with that email. Any questions so far that I've missed in the chat there? No? Cool, awesome, I must be doing good. Or everybody just walked away. So here is an example of that email, all right? Um, there's a lot going on in here, and yes, you can, can control that verbiage. In this email, we are explaining what's going on. Welcome to the Hive platform. Here's your QR code so you can onboard your device. And here's your unique access code I mentioned earlier. Now you're like, wow, that access code doesn't really look too friendly. It's, it's alphanumeric, which is great, it's unique. Um, but the, we listen, a paper can listen to the community and say, hey, we need the ability to go ahead and change this access code. Papercut said, great, we'll enable that. And it's now in your systems today. And admin has the ability to go in and either at the point of invite or after the fact, go in and change the access code to something more friendly. Maybe it's numeric, maybe it's alphanumeric, maybe it's all alpha, something that the user knows. Um, but for the most part, 95% of the people uh, will never read an email, right? They'll look for something they can click on. They're like, yeah, that looks good. I'm going to click on get started. And that's pretty much what they're going to do. And this is what is going to be the wow factor for that IT admin wanted to bring on the solution. Papercut, once again, is going to fully communicate with that end user, what do I need to do to start setup printing? Well, you have three easy steps. The first step, you need to download and install that edge node service, okay? Um, I'm going to click download. Now, you'll notice that no point in time when we download or install, am I asking that user for their paper cut credentials? We already know who they are. We invited them via email. So this link, this edge node service I'm downloading, and this app that I install on my mobile phone are all tokenized and know exactly that I'm Ryan, I'm not Rich, I'm not Mark, and it's not burdening me for any type of credentials when I install these two uh, applications. Now, I will go ahead and put a little side note there. I do get some pushback, right, uh, from IT. So my users don't have permissions to install their own applications. And we have to talk through that. They can, there's some GPO scripting they can do, or they need to go out and manually install that for them if they're not granting permissions like that. But the Intune integration allows us to go ahead and bypass that and install those apps automatically on their managed workstations for them. All right, so I just uh, installed this Edge node. I installed the app on my phone. I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. The third step, which is the most important step, how do I print? Right? So we want to go ahead and communicate with the users. Um, how are they going to print from their Chrome OS, their Windows device, their Mac device, their iPhone, their Android? What you'll notice is that nothing changes. They go Control-P, File Print. Papercut Hive does not change the way that a user prints from any of their devices, which is great. Quick adoption, nothing new to learn. They just have a new printer object called the Papercut Printer. ITs love this because they're like, wow, you are fully communicating with that end user. There should be no uh, questions on why they can't figure out how to set up printing and start printing right away to the paper cut printer. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my, uh, my iPhone here. Are there any questions in the chat that I'm missing? Hey, Ryan, if you could, let's um, show off the iPhone real quick to the group, and then I'm going to swing back over and kind of give us some sales tips on, on what to do with all this great information. And, and folks, Ryan has done this so much into the depths that he's explained already um, that I think that you need to have him into the team um, to talk through uh, what Hive does for your customers uh, through demo uh, and through end user meetings, because he's fantastic. He gets to those levels of information that um, people really want to know. Uh, and because of him, I know Certainly, at least 50% of the conversations I've been through, um, we brought in our Hive deals through those. So his information's uh, really excellent. I want to make sure I equip everybody, though, with a couple of sales nuggets to close out. And uh, we've teased Ryan enough to everybody at the phone. So if they want to use you in a, in a meeting and bring you forward um, through an RSM or through myself, um, we're always ready to have Ryan uh, there because he does an excellent job. But Ryan, if you could show off your iPhone, that'd be awesome. Yeah, good idea, Rich. I'm going to show off my iPhone. All right, so this is the phone. Uh, I'm going to print something from my phone. So I'm going to share. I'm off network. I'm in. I'm not in HQ. I'm in Denver, Colorado. I'm in my home office right now, and I'm going to print something uh, to what they call the paper cut printer. All right, I just printed a job, and you can see this is just an iPhone. I have basic functionality there. I'm going to click print, and away it went. Okay, cool. Now that was kind of boring, huh? Watching something print. But what's going to happen is that's going to go ahead and communicate with the Edge node, and right away I'm getting a notification on my phone. Ryan, you have jobs pending release. This is the Hive mobile release app, okay? It's not complicated. I didn't have to log in. It already knows who I am, and it knows what jobs are waiting for me within the Edge Mesh. But my Edge Mesh is here in Denver, and my, the printers are over in uh, ACI HQ in Arkansas. 
So cool. So I'm going to go ahead and select a job here. I have a 26 page job there. I want to show you some cool stuff. This is mobile release. This is what we can use to release to any device. So single function printers. Now at a glance, I'm going to get a nice thumbnail of the job so I can clearly uh, be still competent. Okay, I'm printing the right document. And I do have the option to change some attributes. I can change the number of copies. I can change, hey, if I want single sided or two sided, I'm going to print it two sided or single sided. I can choose if I want to print the color or black and white and newly released stapling at the bottom. You see that there? I'm going to say, yeah, you know, I want this stapled. Okay, I'm going to hit print, and it's like, oh, well, where's it printing, Ryan? Well, this in the mobile release, um, the admin gets to choose what type of access I have to release jobs on printers. Can I choose from a laundry list of printers that are either logically or illogically named? Or do I need to physically be at that device and scan a QR code or tap an NFC badge? Now, the dangerous part here with the list is that I'm here in Denver, right? I can print a 500-page job and release it in Rich's office uh, unbeknownst to him. All right. The reason why I say that is because I did that during a demo. Um, I released, I printed 500 pages. I released it on our sales rep's uh, printer in Canada. He sent me a chat message. Hey, did you just print something and waste all my paper? The answer was yes, I did that. And it worked. So it was fantastic. I'm going to go and choose uh, this top printer here. You're going to see some cool stuff come up. These are print rules that I enabled just for this demo to kind of show you what the user is going to see at the point of release. I'm encouraging uh, two-sided print or black and white printing. I'm giving the user the option to either keep it in color or convert to black and white. Okay, yeah, I'll convert it to black and white. Next, um, I had another rule in there to encourage two-sided printing. Um, you know what, no, I'm gonna keep it one-sided. Thanks for asking. So now I sent that job there, and now those print rules can be uh, what we call the gentle approach, we can ask, or we can force that. We can force a user printing to a certain, uh, a certain user printing to the environment that they, even though they choose color, it's gonna convert it to black and white in the back end or convert it to two-sided. Uh, and that's the mobile app. It's gonna release, it's gonna fail here because I wanna show you what happens when it fails because this is important here because when things work, you're like, okay, that was boring. But when things break, that's when things get interesting. The job failed, but the job is still available to me to release on another device. Papercut Hive will not delete that job. It's not disappeared. I don't have to go and reprint it. It's letting me know that job failed. Um, maybe print to another printer, maybe talk to your admin, but now it's clearly communicating back to the user in case of a failure of a job. All right, so that's the iPhone there. Uh, pretty fun stuff, right? That's the paper cut I have app, mobile release. Now, Rich, do you want me to show some of the print rules or maybe what it looks like on the full embed? Well, he's on mute. I, like I think we'll move back over. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna move. Over. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, move go back it. over. But um, what I what I think I want uh, the whole group to know is you need to know more information. Ryan's here to help. We're here to help. So let's uh, reach out and get some demos done. Uh, to wrap us up, I know we've got five minutes or less, and uh, I'm going to try and give us some of the best information in that time period. So I'm going to um, move over to presenter here, and uh, I am going to share my screen, and let's see if we can knock out this uh, this deck over here. Here we go. So um, real quick, I want to run you through some good use cases. Uh, here and how we're um, seeing uh, paper cut in environments. And um, these are actual wins. One of them is mine, one of them is not. Um, just to help you see exactly where this sits and that people are really adopting it. So this particular customer uh, is in Ohio. They brought in Hive because they have a mobile deployed case uh, casework uh, employee base. And they go out and they used to leverage Google Cloud Print, funny enough, to do a lot of this work, but there's a lot of paperwork involved with what they do when they do home visits and so on. Uh, and they are now running Hive on two different manufacturers in the environment um, to be able to uh, get their job done. So I want you to know uh, this is healthcare and it's highly regulated uh, and it's passed the, the litmus test there as it has in many other of these um, non-acute and acute um, situations. Another good one for you is co-working space um, and i think that ryan mentioned it a little bit shared office spaces um, real estate uh, these are real real areas to look at but um, being able to onboard and offboard tenants fairly quickly uh, there is basic reporting uh, in paper cut hive today um, there will be something a little more robust in the future it sounds like from what ryan said but um, this enables to turn on that feature uh, and still see who's using the equipment uh, for billable purposes or just for informational purposes. Real quick, um, these are all places where we have sold and uh, gotten new customers demoing um, Hive right now. The list is growing by the minute 
Um, so don't hesitate, reach out to us and we can help you navigate that conversation. But to Mark's point, education number one, healthcare number two, uh, I believe real estate is number three. Uh, and we have um, a lot of different customers adopting it. So fast facts for you guys as a sales team, really um, focus on these cloud hosted, uh, minimal to no IT effort there. Subscription pricing, that means that you don't ever own it. It's a cloud service like OneDrive or 365 apps. Um, someone else is running it for you and maintaining it. It's a subscription. Uh, unlimited users. So um, when you install this uh, app on your device, just like with MF, you have unlimited users in your environment. Touch list and touch release. Um, so be aware those are both options with all the discussions we're having around COVID and and um, you know, being touch free uh, might be part of your talk track, um, but touch is still there if you want it. Quick setup, easy to support. You can support it. We can support it. Um, they can support it, but it really shouldn't need much support to be honest. Uh, and that was the goal here. Um, but there's a lot of great features in there as you've seen, and definitely looking forward to show you more of that. Here we are at the end, um, and as always, we're here to help uh, a lot of great resellers, partners, customers on this call right now. Um, and I want to make sure that, you know, we're all here to help. So um, on Hive in particular, but just in general, we uh, training resources that we offer remotely or on site in ACDI. PaperCut themselves, uh, as a reseller, you have access to all their virtual courses in their iLearn platform. Uh, hands on uh, down in Benton, our headquarters. Pre sale support. Ryan is part of that team. I am part of that team. Uh, making sure that you have what you need uh, and understand what we're getting ready to do. So don't ever feel like you're alone. NFRs, trials, demos, all of these are applicable on, on Hive. Run them in your office, run them with your customer, whatever you feel is appropriate. Collateral, presentations, slicks, um, emails, whatever you need in that category, we're here to supply it. Um, ACDI's hub, um, for those of you that don't know, is a real great landing page where all of our content is kept. Uh, and your RSMs have probably put together a lot of great um, content packages for your conversation. So uh, more out there uh, if you need it. And uh, post-sale support. We have a, a massive team that spends hours a day um, making sure everybody's happy, uptime is there, um, and everyone's satisfied with their implementation and, and features that they're using. So um, in a nutshell, we're here to help. Uh, and anybody that's worked with us before hopefully understands that. Uh, so moving forward through here, uh, I want to thank you for your time today. My call to action for you, and I, I think for the marketing team is going to send a follow up. Reach out to your RSMs. I'm certainly going to send an email to everybody that attended today and just offer uh, my time up to talk through this more. Ryan's always available, uh, really great at what he does. Mark's available. The whole team's available. Uh, we want to see some success, and we definitely want you guys um, to be fully equipped with the, the right information. And as you can see, things are changing fast. Um, so let's be prepared for that. And uh, thank you for your time today, everyone.